I'm making a painting today worth $200,000. This is gonna be a big canvas day. So what are some things that can affect the value of a painting? Well, there are several factors, but ultimately art is subjective, which is how you can also see paintings that look really simple and modern art pieces sell for lots of money. And I wanted to do my own take on one of these pieces. So here we go. A large canvas does require a lot of paint. Luckily, I can reuse wall paint. Always save your leftover wall paint. You never know when you might need it. Fun fact, this was the old wall color for this room. And it is going to go here on the wall. Let's hope this paint is not too crusty. When I open it, I bet it's gonna be all separated and good. Oh, you are so gross. Oh, so gross. <laughs> I've learned this trick where you put the bag on the lid and then seal it shut and it keeps the paint fresher and nicer and likewise the lid doesn't get the crusty bits into the paint. I wish I had known that for the color I'm using today. <laughs> I think it just needs a good stir. Luckily, none of the crusty bits had gotten into the paint. I did originally spend a lot of money on this wall paint. It is a good quality paint and it shows. Look at that color, it is gorgeous. First things first, this needs a coat of paint. I'm never too worried if the canvas has a little bit of a ripple in it because when you paint over, often the paint will tighten the canvas and it'll, it'll sort itself out. But don't be afraid of a ripple, basically. You know what? This paint is so nice. I've hardly used any of it, and it's already like covered the canvas. Just to recap, this is a modern art painting that I am designing and making, and I'm going to begin by covering the canvas solidly with that wall paint color that I absolutely love. The painting is going to be covered in simple shapes, and for these shapes, I am using masking tape, and I highly recommend using masking tape if you want a straight line on a canvas. And I'm using the handy trick where you paint the lining color on the tape first before you start on the main color. The paint that I'm using today is a thicker, better quality acrylic paint than I normally use. Normally, I go for the cheap craft stuff. I did have to water it down though because it was thicker. And the reason I am painting with it today is because I am painting with the mindset that this painting is going to be worth a lot of money. Even if it's not going to be. Obviously this painting's not actually $200,000. If you've gotten this far in the video and you thought I was seriously selling this for $200,000, you might be new to my channel. Hi there, I am Jamie Jo. I do arts and crafts and fun videos and things. And by no means is this painting actually worth $200,000, but I am painting with that mindset. I have seen other simplistic art pieces sell for a lot of money. I just wanted to have my own take on one of those style of paintings. And I also can set the value of my own art. So you know what? No, this painting is worth $200,000. Woo! Awesome! Go us! Isn't this such a cool life achievement? I told you I was bringing the chaos. Many apologies for changing my mind mid voiceover, but here we are. Oh, there's a rainbow. Sorry, there's a rainbow outside my window right now. It's just made this day so much better. Back to the painting. I've actually painted these shapes about four or five times. That's how many coats of paint are on each one. Once they were all really dry, I got to remove the masking tape for the first shapes. These next shapes, I'm gonna have overlay the other shapes, just a little bit. Of course, we gotta do our prep work, lining the masking tape, and then we start painting the shapes again. I'm trying to keep the coats very thin and very even, which is why I'm doing so many coats. I really want the painting to have a very nice flat finish, a good quality finish, and I'm making sure the coat is nice and even, that there's not any brush strokes showing. I really want a nice, smooth color. Again, like the other shapes, I'm going to be doing multiple layers of color, and on the overlaying parts, I'm gonna make sure that there's a nice contrast, so you can tell that there's a shape underneath. At this point, I have actually spent several hours on this painting. I'm getting a little bit tired of painting the same colors again and again, but I'm very excited to be removing this masking tape, and then I'm moving on to another part because I had a thought. What if I added even more shapes? And what if I added some lines too? So here we go. We are adding another shape up top. Hello, behind the scenes mess. No, everything's not clean all the time. Why would that happen? Why, why would that be a thing? I do art. Art rooms aren't clean. Anytime I'm filming anything, just assume the behind of the camera is just awful. It's gonna be full of so much junk. So many open paint bottles, spills, dirt and mess. But this looks nice. The scene looks nice, doesn't it? And we are back to removing that masking tape. I am so glad that the lines are coming out so clean. By the way, I'm only having to do small touch-ups, but I am taking extra care with those touch-ups because, again, in my mind, I have set a price on this painting and I want to put in the extra effort and the extra detail. Despite it being simple, I know this looks simple, but it actually is taking more effort than I thought it would. <laughs> I quite liked the streaks that I added, so I decided to add some more streaks. But this time I'm doing one big connecting shape and I'm using the color purple, the lighter shade of purple. I brought out my X-Acto knife to cut that masking tape into just the right shape. And here we go. This should be the final coat of paint that I'm putting on the canvas. I'm cleaning up lines. No, I'm not always using the masking tape. I probably should. 
I took more time because I didn't, but, <laughs> but I fixed those lines. And here we are, and I am still not content because I am never finished as a person, so let's add some white shapes as well. It's okay, it was easy, it only took a few more hours. And it's taking the hours because I'm having to wait for each paint layer to dry. And I put four coats of paint on those white blocks. Now we just hang it up. Yeah. <laughs> And here we are, the finished painting. I think that's exactly what my office needed. That's that, that's great. Oh wow, that's what I needed. That's that, I love that. That is such a me painting. Those are all my favorite colors. I like how all the colors are coming down. I definitely thought this project was gonna go quicker. The painting took a long time. It took a full day to do. I think what made it take longer is I did decide to have some of the shapes overlay the other shapes, which means I had to fully paint those shapes. Did about three coats per one, wait for each coat to dry, remove the masking tape, and then start again. Although the painting looks simple, it actually took a bit more effort to do, so I have more respect now having done this project for people who do the abstract paintings it still takes time effort planning everything sometimes if you don't understand something it is good to go ahead and try it yourself because you will learn you will learn why <laughs> say i've learned why abstract art could possibly cost a lot of money depending on the size of the project the effort put into it the materials used the straightness of that line it's really hard to get a straight line that is hard so there are a lot of factors that could play into the price of a painting with this painting obviously i have set my own price for it as this much Two hundred thousand dollars whoa obviously currently no one is buying the painting for that price something i will say though is having started this project out with the idea in mind of the painting is worth this much made me work harder on the project want to finish the project and gave me more inspiration to do it well and i think going forward this is something i'm going to start doing as an artist i'm used to doing a lot of commission based work and that's been my inspiration to do stuff this year i'm doing a lot more personal projects and in doing those projects i think i need to set the price of them in my head mentally before i do them commission myself to do them and i think that will make me put more effort into them because this piece is essentially a piece I commissioned for me. It's a painting that I've been wanting to do for my office to have a nice background piece, something that's not too distracting but looks artistic and full of all of my favorite colors. And so here we are. I feel like the piece very much displays me. <laughs> and what I would define as a background piece is something that adds to the room, adds to the atmosphere, makes things look pleasant and inviting, improves the theme, but in no means is at the focal point. It does not distract, it does not draw attention. It just kind of serves a purpose of highlighting other aspects. This is actually my favorite color here. Mint Macaron is probably the closest to this color I can verbally say, but that's what this color is. It's a very vibrant bluish green that is light in tone and I love it. Again, it used to be the color of my office space, but I've also found that when the whole room is that color, video wise, it just doesn't suit me. <laughs> but I have got it back in my room now. The other thing my office is missing though is I wanna add characters in each of the three windows there. So that's the next step of the office. Now I have to run because my light is falling out of my ceiling upstairs. <laughs> What a segue. So I need to go sort that out and make sure my house doesn't catch on fire. I will catch you next time. Bye, goodbye, bye. It's like the colors that are floating out of my head. <laughs>